right everyone so we're going back at it again another tractor here got this one right behind me uh, there it is right behind me so for me I, uh, I just start out the paintings by um, seeing something in my head so the concept in my head is already developed and now I'm just gonna lay down uh, basically what I see but I'm gonna be using the tractor as my main source uh, material and um, yeah, it's kind of like writing a song, you know, when you hear something in your head. Well, for me, writing a song, I hear something in my head, then I can put it down. It's the same way. So, like I, I, like I said, I already have kind of like a, a concept of what the painting is going to look like. And I'm just going to roll with that. What I'm going to end up doing today is taking a page from Picasso's book. And I'm going to paint the bucket of the tractor from here. And then... I'm gonna set up here, which is also kind of practical. I'm gonna <laughs> land in the shade and I'm gonna capture the side of the tractor there. And of course there is the bigger one here, but uh, I just like the bucket on this one. So I figure I would start there. Anyway, sorry, it's kind of confusing right now. I don't know where to look because I'm using my cell phone. But um, yeah, so if you see my eyes, like it's just because I'm trying to figure this out anyway and i got my tripod i'm using as like some sort of selfie stick so yeah improvise 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 that's it so i'm gonna try and do this real quick and get out of the sun yeah let's just get going all right so this is kind of the start of the painting here um, i like to introduce these acrylic colors to begin with just to um have a good reaction as soon as i start to add add the oils on top um, believe it or not, but these simple colors here are going to change the painting from the very beginning instead of adding them in later um, behind uh, to make it look like a background. I find that having the background to begin with is going to force my eye to create color in a different way that reacts with these initial colors. Um, so I just have a straight black acrylic yellow a little bit of mix of some uh, green and blue and that's it so now i'm gonna let that dry and get on to doing the sketch and put a bunch of oils all over it so my youtube videos don't have any commercials so i figured i'd make my own here it goes tomatoes this is what is for lunch with tabasco tomatoes they're good and stuff eat them Alright, so we got a sketch laid out. That's pretty much what I saw in my head. Just a nice twisted bucket. I really like the bucket of the tractor. I think it's like, I don't know, the claw of a dinosaur. So to me, I really want to emphasize that. Um, it might end up looking a little bit bigger. Now push the tractor back a little bit, but yeah, I think I'm going to stay in the shade because today's supposed to be like maybe almost close to 100. And I don't want to pass out before lunch. I'll pass out in the evening, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Alright, so we got some good color reactions going on here. Um, I didn't really film any of that, because I was just trying to feel it out myself. And um, it would have been funny in a time lapse, just to, you know, see the colors all slap in together. But, like I was saying in the beginning, the background is really making me um, change you know, the oils that I'm using, the colors in the front. Um, I guess originally I had some like plan for like orange to match that orange, but this yellow really wasn't giving me that. And so then the pinks in here is really reacting to the green and the yellows is causing this vibrancy color through this um, magenta that I found in here that really, really started to react. Um, so the entire work itself is more about finding colors that are you know jumping out and speaking to each other and not really so much trying to um, you know paint the tractor as is because you know that would be boring you could just take a picture of a tractor if you wanted to see that <laughs> but for me I'm just trying to express what color can do uh, what it can say 
uh, how it can transform an object and um, really using the tractor as source material, painting from real life, and then just running with it, checking in with the tractor, you know, for the material itself, for the object itself, and um, really getting at a lot of these colors here. So now that I said a whole bunch of stuff, what I feel like I'm going to do now is add in some nice big clouds. I really want some big clouds back here, up here in this region. So I put this black here initially thinking that would be pretty cool, like a black cloud, like a negative part of the cloud. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that, and then we're just going to see what happens as we begin to kind of paint around it. And we'll make a cloud like kind of like what a child would child would see a cloud as. We have an idea it is a cloud. What I really want to get at is to leave this black here. I mean, this is pretty cool. So now we have this kind of blue-purple working with this kind of like darker green, earth green, I would say. And it looks like a stormy cloud. Right, so this, that's what I'm chasing here. I'm really chasing and also leaving that space. Right, I'm trying to play with the dimensions, um, not so much three-dimensional in all parts. So you can see certain parts are really flat. Certain parts, especially here in the cloud, like what is the background, what is the foreground, what is the middle ground. I'm just trying to abandon that. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I'm really just kind of grown bored with that approach to painting you know I still do it and I I mean I like to do it but for these particular works what I'm really getting at is breaking all of that or abandoning that so to speak right so now let's put another cloud in here and they're just they're really flat clouds and again right you know I feel like this needs some of that I got all my colors all mixed and I don't know what they're doing now. Yeah. See, so as I'm laying that down, I'm just looking for a reaction. Like this, these strokes here, this color, that kind of muted tan that I have going on, that's not really giving me anything. So I'm going to go for something else. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of this. Now my brush is shot. All right, let's start over. So I have a little cadmium yellow here. Uh, okay. So I have a little permanent rose here. I'm just gonna make up this nice pink. Okay, this is already doing it. I'm trying, basically trying to get to get to like a peach because I think a peach color will really begin to react in here. That looks nice. Against the green, I'm then following again, right? Um, see what it does here. Not so much, okay? But what I do see in my eyes is a little a yellow. Now, I don't know yellow clouds, but let's do it. Let's see how it reacts. Beautiful. I'm just going to cover that. Yeah, I really dig that, right? So now we have this yellow and green, nice colors. Beautiful reaction here with the black. It's kind of transparent, right? So the opacity is kind of, it's not thick at all, which is why I lay down those acrylics in the background, because I want to see that. Right now, as this begins to read, I might even say that this yellow is, uh, let's see what this does. Right? We could say that yellow is acting like the sun, even though I haven't painted a sun. You know, you see yellow as a... 
Wow. See, it's very playful in that way, but analytically, there is a lot that I'm trying to chase here, trying to achieve. Um, so I even feel like now this region is not doing its job. Maybe it's because of this. You see this, you know, grayscale. They're too. I think they're too close together. So I'm gonna do something pretty radical here. I might not like it, but whatever. There we go. I think that works great. And I'm laying it on pretty thick. Yeah. So that to me worked really well. Right. Again, a lot of them are like complementary colors or colors that are, you know, they're, they're somewhat close together. But in their reaction, that's what I'm looking for. Alright, so in their reaction is what I'm really chasing here. You know what? Um, I'm almost tempted to put some, you know, I'm going to do it just because, you know. in the brush. I guess that's okay. Yeah. What else? See now this this I really enjoy. Right? This negative acting as a negative uh, for all these colors here. But um kind of still feel like it needs to have more more here. I'm just gonna outline these just to see how that goes. Interesting, a little abstract, a little abstract work there. But I think it needs something brighter. Again, let's just put more yellow here. Yeah. And also, let's make up a really nice green, right? So. What I have here now is a little cerulean blue and lemon yellow, which will give you a green that is uh, very vibrant. Yeah. And I got a little blue left over in the brush, which is awesome. And it's just, yeah, it's a beautiful yellow, yellow green. Wow. I'm just gonna cut, oh man. See, these reactions here, those are things that I just love. That's what I'm living for in these works. I think I'm going to keep following this path because that just feels really good. What if there were a giant tree here? So these works uh, borderline on the imaginative, the reaction of color, obviously and the abstract and the expression and there's quite a bit going on there so so what would a tree look like what do you be a cool tree or just a cool tree let's just make him nice and cool best part about trees is seeing through them uh, like if you take a picture of a tree and you put it into a uh, grayscale and imagine that all those little tiny specks that you can see are lights that's what happens in a tree so 
or maybe childlike. Maybe right now I'm overthinking. But. Yeah, look, this is wonderful here. Right? So we have this like yellow green with gentles here against these uh, like warmer oranges. And we got close to this yellow orange here. That is a beautiful reaction. Right, and as it comes up, it kind of dissipates and breaks up. What does it become? Pushes me into the clouds. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say like where I want to enter the painting because right now that kind of stole my heart. So yeah, what can I say? You know, and I think I'm gonna balance that out and put some more on the other side. And I hope you can hear everything I'm saying because I'm saying a lot of nonsense. But let's just uh, for the sake of funds and funds sake, yeah. Just doing that. Okay, I'll give you a chance to check it out. All right, let's get some more of this. This would be great. It's an excellent green, you know, it's very vibrant. That lemon yellow. And if you want more of a um, natural green, um, then you would really want to use like your ultramarine blue, your thalos blue, and a cadmium yellow. That will get you closer. Maybe a little bit of red. That will get you closer to uh, this copy here. Oh, wow. Alright, I think, I think I found my missing color over here. Why these were not... Why this wasn't doing what it was supposed to. This is excellent. Opened up that bucket. That's great. Nah, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna over touch it, right? I feel like I want to blend. You know, my analytical brain says soften that blow. Oh, soften that blow by adding another one. Um, no, I'm not gonna do that, right? This is really hard about doing these works is that, you know, my working brain is constantly. My working brain is telling me to do things that I'm trying to uh, steer clear of. So it's a real uh, push and pull. At, at the end of the work, it may look um, really easy. And, you know, like I just, you know, ran, you know, like I, I, like I had a bunch of uh, whiskey and then just fell into a painting. But, what I'm going for here is something a little bit uh, upsetting for me and uh, also fun and expressive, but at the same time, um, difficult because I have to control myself from these things that, I, that those are my instincts, right? So, so that's what I'm trying to avoid. Uh, and so now I just kind of feel like I'm gonna stand here and check it out for a while and see I just want to check it out for a while and see what is what like I do feel like these marks here could be a little bit more red we could get more of this permanent rose and really bring that out idea of the bucket going back and around, well not the bucket, the arm, going up and around, that to me is a lot of fun. And I got a, I got a nice muted color here, I'm going to see if I can get, no that's not muted, let's see if we can get that, uh, those chrome parts. I just kind of want to build out that. No, let's just start here. I 
Okay, cool. I'm going to leave that and take this. Try and build out this additional shape. It may not read right away. There's, there's some really cool... Uh, Yeah. I'm okay with outlining you know, as long as it leads to something. If it adds form. I'm okay with that. Just a square in there. Weird. What a weird little thing to have on there. Well, there is another one here. I'm gonna put that in too. And they're like uh, the arms that hold the hydraulics. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there. All right, now I'm doing the brush juggling game. All right, so are we still on? Yeah, we're just juggling here. Okay. Let's just have it come out of nowhere. Just something that makes you ask what, what is what, what's going on here? Okay. What are those things? I don't know. I just like them. And there's even an additional one down here I didn't really see. shocks though. I don't know. <sighs> Not worried about that. Yeah, this one's really quick. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, let's take a look up close. Mm -hmm. I think it's done. Uh, it feels pretty good. There's a whole lot going on. Uh, just a little announcement uh, for all you youngsters out there. When you are down cleaning your brushes close to a large painting and it hasn't been very windy and all of a sudden you're not paying attention, you may end up with a painting coming right at you full speed. So uh, yeah, it looked like I went to uh, some sort of parade and um, yeah, it just flew right at me and I caught it and I was like, well, uh, yeah. So now I have this really cool little blur here, uh, which no one will probably even notice um, unless you know the story of the painting that flew off at me. So I'm going to clean up. Uh, I'm going to take it back into the studio. And uh, yeah, I feel, I'm, I'm still searching for some words, but I do see some words that will be here. This will not be a wordy, uh, wordy? Is that a? Word? Wordy? Word. Painting. Wordy, word, wordy painting. Anyway, you get it. It won't be one of those paintings, but, but I do see some words. So, uh, yeah, there will be some sort of direction here. And then I'll sign it, and we'll call it Fenito. Uh, what can I say? I don't know. 
I'll put some pictures up of the final product. Like and subscribe. You know the bit. Uh, share with a friend if you enjoy this. And if you have any questions or if you just like to leave some comments. You now I'd like to know what you think about the color reactionary uh, work. You know, um, and I'd like to know uh, if anybody wants to critique the work, what they think about it. Even if you think it's trash, it's fine with me. I'd still uh, appreciate you taking a look, right? Because that's what art is all about. Anyway, I don't know what I'm saying. And um, yeah, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and everyone seems to have a sign off. Like, uh, until next time, uh, keep those brushes moving. And uh, I haven't thought of one. So if you can think of one, or if you even think it's important, I don't think it's important. I think it's better just to say bye like normal humans. So, uh, bye. Are you still here?